resort, ski resort outside of Toledo, Washington. Um, normally John would be here, he's, he's away at an unavoidable uh, conflict. So. Um, uh, I, I hear everything, actually, that Dwayne and Alan and Wes and Steve has said. We're an EMS provider through our ski patrol, so we deal with those regulations. Uh, we build things, chair lifts, and want to build more. So we, we, we run into the financing issues that uh, Alan talked about. We're snow farmers. We have six big red groomer tractors that come under the same EPA regulations that Wes was talking about. And, and we, we manage timberlands, too. So I, can, I, I, I hear everything everybody here is saying. Um, I just briefly wanted to talk about the, the NEPA process, which mm -hmm. is something that we've been going through for the last 15 years. Um, in uh, 1997, we proposed what was a, a pretty modest development um, proposal to the Forest Service, and it was to cut oh, a couple 300 acres of timber to make new ski runs, new parking lots, some utility upgrades. Um, we wanted to build a lodge on private land and uh, add a couple of chairlifts. We started the NEPA process and uh, decided to go for an EIS, the highest level of do basically because I think everyone was afraid that it would be appealing coming out of the timber wars. Um, started into that process um, because we didn't know any better. <laughs> Ended up spending a lot more time and a lot more money than, than we'd ever anticipated that we would. Uh, we, you Can know, you kind of say what you anticipated, just generally even, compared to what? Well, it's pretty naive. <laughs> uh, I probably anticipated spending maybe a quarter. We're a small business. We're probably one of the smallest businesses to ever really go through the process. Mm -hmm. We don't grow us very much, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're high profile, but it's a small business. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up spending five times that much, or, or better. Mm -hmm. uh, How much up, time? Uh, seven years. Mm -hmm. And what happened along the way is uh, we had uh, multiple listings of the species. Mm -hmm. and we, had, we had bull trout listed, we had uh, lakes listed, that we had to go back and deal with. All that money went to uh, biologists and consultants and agency review. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it didn't end up in the pockets of uh, anybody in you know, Stevens County. Right? Um, and it didn't really change the way we were going to do anything. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't help particularly protect the environment. Um, uh, so in 2004, we, we did get our record of decision. And, and we, we got an EMS. And we thought, well, okay, we're good to go. Uh, this will help stave off some of the uncertainties we continue to develop. And we have been making capital investments and in development for the last um, seven years or so. But as it turns out, that even that EIS isn't really good enough for to, to stave off the uncertainty. You know, it's, it's good for the USDA Forest Service. It's, it's not good enough for USDA to roll development. Uh, we apply for a loan guarantee credit, being what it is. To, we hope to uh, develop... Uh, this summer, put in a new chairlift and build a new mid mountain lodge on private land. And uh, uh, we figured we had our ducks in a row, environmentally speaking, because we had the gold standard, we had the EIS. So we applied for a USDA rural development uh, loan guarantee. And uh, um, the, uh, the EIS that's good enough for the USDA Forest Service wasn't good enough to, 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 to make it through that stage of the loan guarantee. Uh, they required more scoping, and so we, we scoped. We uh, put our scoping notice in the local papers, soliciting comments. Uh, it was sort of a real technicality in, 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 in the difference between the EIS standards. And uh, so we put it, we, we scoped in the local papers, soliciting comments on the proposal. We didn't get any agency comments, we didn't get any um, from the tribes. We got two comments supporting the project, and that was it. But because of the timeline required for the scoping notice and the comment period and our short building season, we didn't do those projects this year. We fully intended, we, we couldn't get funding, and we fully intended to, to move forward on those projects. And, uh, you know, we hope to employ local, local tradespeople and laborers for that project. And, and we didn't. They didn't go to work. We, you know, we're thinking 25 or 20, 25 uh, tradespeople and laborers. And, uh, you know, they didn't work. Uh, the last couple of years, I mean, I know most of them, you know, the last couple of years those folks had worked uh, finishing up jobs that were on their books and whatnot. And this year, really, they just sat and we could have put them to work. And because of the, the most technical application of that rule by 
a civil servant, um, which was kind of rulemaking outside of the legislative process, we weren't able to move ahead. 